because our manner of approach always influences how much of the word of the Lord we get. Our manner of approach to the word will always influence how much of that word, how much virtue, how much grace you're able to draw out of the word. So if you've not been drawing out a whole lot from the word, perhaps you may just want to check up on how you approach the word. Hallelujah. Well, praise the name of the Lord. We give God thanks. We've been on a series, um, Instructions in Righteousness, and um, we took that from our text in 2 Timothy chapter 3. So if you would come with me, let's just read that again. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. Hallelujah. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be completely thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, and so we established a couple of things last week, um, starting up on this series. We mentioned, looking from verse 16 of this chapter, it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Lord. Um, it means all scripture is, is God breath. All scripture has the breath of God. All scripture has the anointing of the Lord. All scripture has God's power within it, right? Um, we, we, when, whenever we receive the word of the Lord, we are receiving the breath of God. We are receiving God's anointing. We are receiving God's grace. God's word is already quickened. The Bible is quickened. You know, we've said this a couple of times. But um, it bears repetition that, you know, sometimes we are looking out for a quickened word. We are trusting God. God, give me a word. God, give me a word. And looking out to, you know, hear from God for a word. And we are asked, yes, God does give um, certain instructions that pertain to the context that we are in. You know, there are some unique instances where um, we need a specific instruction as regards, you know, a particular step that we need to take in life. For instance, you know, you want to get into a business and you want the Spirit of God to highlight within your spirit what business to go into, right? You want to get into a marriage and you also know the Spirit of God to highlight, okay, who should I marry? So in that regard, there are specific words that the Lord will quicken into your heart. There are specific directions, you know. There is nowhere in the scripture that says that the name of your wife is Tolu. <laughs> Right, there's no way in scripture that says that, but then the spirit of the Lord can highlight some things in your heart. But what I'm trying to drive at is this that if we just receive God's word as God speaking to us, it would do us a whole lot good. It would do us good a whole lot. If we would just receive God's word as God, God's word is Him speaking to you. You know, when some people say that, um, we don't hear God. I've never heard God before. What you're literally saying is that you've not read your Bible before. Because your Bible is not someone trying to tell someone to tell you something. You know, your Bible is not just Paul, James, Jude talking to you. No, it's not that. Your Bible is not all of those people. Your Bible is God himself reaching out to you through the pages of the Bible. So the, the, the written word, I like to say it this way, that the written word was given unto us to unveil the living word to us. The written word was given to us to unveil, to unpack, to reveal the living word to us. So when we go into the scriptures, we are searching for life. We are searching for, for the revelation of Lord Jesus Christ. So it is speaking already. It is God breathed already. It is anointed. Right, so if you just go into the scriptures and act on what you see in the Bible, it will produce just as much in your life as any prophetic word, any quickened word. In actual fact, you going into the scriptures by yourself to find out what the Bible says for you and acting on that is very much powerful and much more powerful than anything that you can get. Even you know any prophetic word that you can get, right? So it is God breath. And he says it is profitable and it highlights in you know the several ways in which it profits us. He said it's profitable for doctrine. We said that what doctrine, another word we can use is teaching. 
or even instruction, I mean, you see, you know, to be instructed, to be taught, right? That's what it means, you know, doctrine there. It goes ahead to say for reproof. We said the word reproof there actually means uh, for conviction, for evidence, right? That the Bible, the word of the Lord is our evidence. We don't need anything outside of it. We don't need any external thing to confirm. God's word itself is the confirmation of itself. Do you see? God's word in and by itself will confirm itself. It will work by itself, right? So um, it's it's evidence. It's evidence. You know, it's another way we can also see. Like I said, it's conviction. So it helps to 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 work on your convictions. It helps to um, convince you of the truth concerning a particular thing. So, for instance, how did you get saved? You heard the gospel. Ephesians 1 and verse 13 says that in whom you believe after you heard the gospel, the word of truth, that is the gospel of salvation. So the gospel came to you, and what did it do? It brought in an evidence. It brought an evidence within you beyond anything that you can see. Not as though you saw any vision, you didn't, you didn't have any dream and all that, but you heard God's word, and by itself, it formed that evidence. And that's what gives faith. That's what we mean when, you know, faith comes by the hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. What we, what we mean is this, that when God's word comes, it comes with faith. You know, when it comes, it comes with the ability within it to set you on your feet. That's what we are saying about God's word. And then when I heard it say, it's also useful for correction, you know, to straighten up, to adjust. And then, of course, useful as well, profitable as well for instruction in righteousness. And that's where we, you know, dive in a little deeper, the instruction in righteousness. Um, we also mentioned that when we're talking about instruction, we're talking about tutoring. That's, that's what the word instruction means. It means to tutor. It means to educate. It means to train. It means to nurture, you know. And for, you know, it actually means to chasten. Yes, it means to chasten. So you see, when the Bible actually talks about um, the chastening of the Lord, you know, in, in Hebrews 12, uh, and if we, maybe we should just touch on that a little bit as we go on today. Um, the chastening of the Lord, if you will come with me to Hebrews 12, read a couple of verses there. Many people sometimes get, um, get it a little confusing when we talk about the chastening of the Lord, the discipline of the Lord, how the Lord disciplines right? And we were wondering what exactly is that. So let's just read Hebrews 12. Let's read from verse 3. Um, it says, mm, from verse 3, mm, uh, okay, let's just cut this, all of that out and start from verse 7. Hebrews 12 from verse 7, because we still have a long, <laughs> we have a long way to, to go in this, in this particular service. So Hebrews 12, 7, it says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be, subject, be in subjection to the Father of Spirits and leave? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, but he for our profit, he says that we may be partakers of his holiness. Verse 11, he says, Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Let's take another word there. Yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. You know, uh, uh, call your attention against where we are coming from, instruction in righteousness. And then he says, to those who have been trained by it. You know, then verse 12 says, therefore strengthen the hands, the hands down their feeble knees. Now, when the Bible talks about the chastening of the Lord, in, in, in actual fact, what the Bible actually talks about when we talk about chastening is actually education. That is the first major, um, what we we'll call it now, the first major interpretation of the word chasing. To chasing actually means to educate. It is the exact same word 
that is used here as chasing, the exact same word was what is used in First Timothy, Second Timothy, rather, our text, 316, instruction, same word. So we can as well put it here as instruction. So to test actually means to educate, to not or to instruct, to teach. That is how God chastens primarily. Now, the reason why many people get into problems and, you know, they get into issues and then they get maybe perhaps get sick, get into some tough places, and then they say, it is God trying to punish me. Really, it's not, that, it's not God trying to punish you. It is actually you bringing your punishment upon yourself because he must have tried to nurture and instruct you before those things happened. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying now, when the Lord chastens, the way he does it is with his word. He prays with his word. Remember John 15, where the Bible highlights how, you know, the vine yet is the, is, the, is the vine, we are the branches, and then he says if the, if the branch bears fruit, he said he prunes it. That is, he removes certain things. How does he do that? How in hell does he do that? The Bible makes you understand in John 17 and verse 17. The Bible says that the word of the Lord is truth. He says, sanctify them by your truth. For your word is truth. The way he chases his people is not by making you sick. No, sir. That's not the way he chases you. That's not the way he disciplines you through the word of the Lord. When God's word comes at you now, he shows you what you ought to be. And by a source, there are certain things like when you look into your life, oh, this is what I ought to be. This is what I'm doing. By that, he's already, he's already giving you the discipline. That's the discipline there. That's the teaching there. That is the training there. If you did not now abide by the training of the Father, you bring upon yourself what you ought to have escaped from by reason of his teaching and training. That's what many people now say, oh, oh, he's training me. No, 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 he was trying to train you some days ago when Pastor showed up and taught you about how you should be joyful, right? And then you just opened to TVN and you saw another man saying, you know what, the joy of the Lord is our strength. He, he has spoken once and you read it almost five times, but you didn't pay attention to it. And then now something happens and you're wondering, what should I do? He already told you what to do. Be joyful. I saw what he get me now. God is not going to chase you and then he says, you know what, uh, you know, in order to discipline you, I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to give you some malaria. He doesn't even have it to give you. Some of the things we think God will give us, he does not even have. He will make you have accident. No, he has come to give us life and life more abundantly, not death. No, if you are a father, would you do that to your own child? You wouldn't. <laughs> the Bible says if you've been able to know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father? No worry to God. So the way the Lord chases, you could go check it myself. I mean, I don't, I don't have um, independence usage to Strong's. Go to Strong's, you'll check it, but you'll see it. Go to um, Vines, Analytical, Strong's, Exhaustive. You'll see there, you know, how that's the word, uh, idea, something like that, you know, or by Doku or something like that. You know, one is a verb, one is a noun, but essentially it's the same root, which means to educate. So when we're talking about instruction, so you're talking about education. God wants to educate you. God wants to teach you. Believers need teaching. Sinners need preaching. I'll say that again. Believers need to be taught. Believers don't go just on preaching. Now, yes, there is. Uh, they, 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 are, they are quite similar in, in you know in, in several ways, but. Essentially, they are different. Although, you know, sometimes they overlap. Within, within the preaching, you find teaching. Within teaching, you find preaching. But there are two different things. You see Paul call himself a preacher and a teacher. You know, first, first Timothy 2, 7. First, uh, second Timothy 1, 11. Called himself an apostle. Called himself a preacher. Called himself a teacher. Right? What do saints need? Saints need to be taken to be taught. You need to be indoctrinated. This is the day and the age where God will actually have us as believers just sit down under the word. You know, the Bible says that you issue in your doctrine. <laughs> so it gets to a point where it doesn't need to necessarily be interesting. There are some times, right, that it may not necessarily be interesting, that it may, it may not be good on your flesh. Just sitting down with the word one hour, two hours, and you are being taught. 
sitting down with the world an hour and a half. That is why we take good time to teach. We don't, we don't, we don't minimize, you know, timing on the word of the Lord. We don't say, you know, just give us a short exhortation. No, you cannot develop and be trained on short exhortations. No, you can't. The Bible says that they may be thoroughly furnished, not sparsely furnished. Thoroughly, if you are going to be thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly furnished, then you have to be thoroughly taught. If you are going to be fit for the work God has for you to do. See, being taught by the word is not just the prerogative of, you know, or the, 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 you know, what we do for Bible teachers. Because some people have got to know this level of thing is for, I'm, I'm, what happened now? I didn't kill Jesus. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not calling to the fivefold ministry. No, it's not about being called into the fivefold ministry. It's about the fact that you are a minister. When you are a Christian, you ought to be taught. You ought to be taught. You know, the word of God was preached unto you, you received it. But now that you are in the faith, we need to open unto you and make you understand the details of what you have received. We need to make you understand what is it that you got. We need to make you understand what happened in that one instance when you got to the altar or knelt down by your bed or wherever it is. And you said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. We need to show you that, see, this is what it means. And it takes more than a day. It tells Brother Sir Peter, Paul, Paul was teaching. The Bible says he started in the evening and he taught all night so much that a man died. He dropped from the third story, dropped down. Paul came and said his life is with him. And Paul didn't say, no, let's just take a break. He raised him up and said, so where were we before we went? <laughs> so where were we before we left? Let's continue. And the guy was traveling the next day. What was he doing? He was making them strong. The reason why many people, you know, deviate and fall by the wayside is because you've not been taught. You've not been taught. You've not been indoctrinated. It's part of what the Lord has sent his ministers to do for the perfecting of the same. The Bible says, Ephesians 4 and verse 13, for the perfecting, for the perfecting, for the equipping of the same. How do we equip the same? By teaching them the word of the Lord. And it's not, it does not have to be interesting. It does not have to be interesting on your flesh. It doesn't have to be. We are not entertainers. I'm not going to make you laugh. If you laugh in the midst of you, well, praise God, glory to God. If you don't laugh, how about go on and keep teaching? And keep teaching. And keep teaching. And guess what? You know something that happens is this. God will always hold you responsible for the revelation that you have to whom what is given, what is expected. Whether you pay attention to what we are saying in church, I've said this before, but it's good to, to highlight some of these things again and again. Whether you're paying attention to this thing that we are saying or not, the fact that you got the opportunity to hear it out, God will actually deal with you as though you should know it. Hmm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say that again. The fact whether you hear what we are saying or not, whether you pay attention to what we are saying or not, whether you give it your, your utmost, you give it your time or not, what, how God is going to interact with you is not based on the revelation that you have. Mm -mm. It's based on the revelation you are supposed to have. That's how he's going to do with you. Paul said to the church, he said, at this time, you ought to be teachers. This is what God expects of you. He said, but when you still have to go over these things again. We start to go over these things again and again. But this is where you ought to be. God is going to deal with you according because you get, you, you've had the opportunity and time. He expects that you should have been. You see, the reason why many people are in certain fights, the very first instance is this. You ought not to be in that kind of fight. If you have paid more attention to the things that have been said and the things the Holy Spirit was trying to pass across you, there are certain fights that you will not you even come to a person. You will not see it. <laughs> you don't even see it. You are, you are burdened with a lot of things. You are putting out so many fires because you haven't paid attention to the instruction in righteousness. He said that the man of God must be perfect, mature, equipped. One translation said that the man of God may be a perfect fit. I love that translation. May be a perfect fit. May be a perfect fit and well equipped unto every good work. Unto every, every good work. So there are good works, but God needs you to be trained for those good works. 
And the way it trains is by teaching you. It's by teaching. It doesn't train you by sending you cancer. No, that's not God teaching you. That's the devil trying to take you. God can't teach you with the, thing, with the same things he came to die for. And that would be counterproductive, don't you think so? He came to die to take those things off. And then he feels that the best way to get a hold of you is to go bring the same things he died for. Go and fetch them from wherever he brought them for and then put them back when you know that's not how that's not how he does it. He does it by the word. By the word. Your word and your staff, they comfort me. So tell yourself, receive the comfort of the Lord. This is the comfort of the Lord. He said that we may, um, Romans 15, 4, say the things that were so mentioned. We are mentioned that we through the prayer and the comfort of scriptures may receive hope. Well, the comfort of scriptures. So you receive comfort when you get into the word. You receive comfort when you listen to the teaching of the word. It is alive and it is spirit. When it gets into you, it, oh, it gives you consolation. It gives you consolation. That in the midst of the trouble, I know that I have an anchor in him. In the midst of the vicissitudes of life, I know that I have one who is interested in my life. He's interested in me. I am his beloved. No matter how much you try to see, it, it, it gets to a point where after being trained, remember Matthew 13, you know, that's four soils, and how the man went and sow, you know, sow the seed, and the seed being the word of the Lord. The Bible says concerning one of the soils that the word of the Lord came, you know, they received it with, you know, it, it came and then it, it was on the on the on the surface that lacked air. But then he came, he didn't lack, he, he lacked earth, so he didn't have deep roots. But when the soil now came and all that, the Bible says it withered. And when he was giving the interpretation to that parable, he said, this is he that received the word of the Lord joyfully. He received the word of the Lord joyfully. He said, because it has, but because it has no roots. He says, when persecution now comes because of the word, he said, he gives him, he faints. He faints. Because persecution has come. He didn't say persecution came because of it. He said the persecution comes because of the word. There is a level of persecution that will come because you have you have to have revelation. Peter looked at Jesus that other time and said, you know, you are the Christ, son of the Lord. I'm sure the devil said, hey, now you get a revelation of it. And then the devil was going to see him as a witch. And the Lord told him, that this is what the devil wants to do to you. It is persecution that is arising because of the word. You can't escape persecution. Just know that. I mean, you ought to know that by now. Everyone will have gotten their fair share of it in this life. It will come. But what will sustain you through it is how much of a perfect fit you've been made to be by the instructions of God. So I thought to just get into this particular side to tell you that one of the ways by which God instructs you, one of the ways by which God, you know, tells you things, right, is by is by is by teaching one of the ways he tastings when we say the testing of the lord the testing of the lord is the teachings of the lord is the teachings of the lord when you do not now obey those teachings of course of course i mean you will get into some mess and how do you get back into get out of those mess we will send you his word again hallelujah so we see that instructions they are very crucial that is how God deals with his people. Instructions in righteousness. That is how we train. That is how we bring growth. That is how we preserve. We, 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 you know, we looked at all that. And we now look at our, what our position should be as a result of this. Number one, we should be people of faith because there are instructions that would not make natural human sense. It won't make natural sense, right? And so we need to come to God and, you know, in faith. He says those that must come, will come must realize that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. As you are coming, you must realize that he is, you right? And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek. So that means that, you know what that means? It means there are some assumptions that you ought to make when you are going into the world. Don't go into the world to try to make it look as though the world does not work. Did you understand what I'm saying? Don't go into the world. That's how people, you know, become atheists. They are trying to invalidate the word. Mm -mm. The position you ought to take, first of all, is this, that there is a God. 
and that he is a rewarder. He's not a fool to master. That is the perspective that he should come into the world. That is, he should come with, with a level of understanding that, look, God's word is true. God's word works. So it is not, it, when, when things don't work, it's not as though it is God's word you are trying to adjust. Mm -mm. When things don't work, you are the one that you will adjust yourself. You are the one that will come back in. Don't deal with, this is what I'm saying. Don't deal with scripture as though script, the scripture has a fault. No, scripture does not have a fault. It has been tested. It has been tried seven times and it has been found to be true. Do you see? So when you're coming into the world, you come, right? You, you, you step into the world with an open heart, ready to receive God, what God has, meekness as well, and faith. Now, let's get into one of the things. I said there are some particular things that the Lord will have me emphasize into the church, of course, and then we'll look at several other things. But there are a couple of things particularly that I believe the Lord will actually have me emphasize to the church in this season. If you will come to, with me to First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter, you know, First, first Thessalonians, <laughs> forgive me, First Thessalonians chapter five. Um, we'll read from verse sixteen, First Thessalonians five. Now there are specific things that the Lord will have me, you know, um, emphasize to the church in this season. First Thessalonians five from verse sixteen it says, "Rejoice always." Now. From verse 16, even almost up till the end of that chapter, you just see one-liners, instructions. That was instructions. These are these like direct instructions. So you see verse 16, rejoice always, straightforward. No much to do to it. You know what it means, rejoice always. Goes ahead, it says pray without season. Verse 17, verse 18, it says, and everything gives thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Verse 19, it says, do not quench the spirit. Verse 20 says, do not despise prophesying. Verse 21 says, test all things, all vast to what is good, for that it is good. Verse 22 says, abstain from every form of evil. You know, verse 23 now says, and God of peace sanctify you, complete your holy, your whole spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then verse 24 says, he will cause his faithful will also will do it. Now, what are these instructions the Lord will have us emphasize? First, we see them highlighted from verse 16. Verse 16, verse 17, verse 18, verse 19, all the way to verse 21 are things that we ought to take heed to in this season. First, it says rejoice always. Church, that is something that you always have to do. The Bible didn't say rejoice when you feel like it. The spirit of the Lord that inspired this scripture knew beforehand some of the things that you will step into. But the Bible here is saying rejoice always. Not sometimes. Not when you feel like. Always. You must always make sure to maintain a joyful heart and a joyful spirit in 2023. We are used to prophetic word. It's a season of bam, this, and it's all good. Yes, God gave prophetic words to churches in a particular season in Revelation. So different churches gave them their word. But look, with some of those prophetic words will come specific instructions that the Lord will emphasize. Not as though if it's not in that season, it should not be for instance. It's, all, it's always in scripture. You ought to rejoice always. But the Lord will deliberately emphasize certain things more than others, because in that season, there, is, there will be uh, uh, a context or a narrative that will come up that will want to get you out of certain instructions, if you understand what I mean. So he emphasizes certain things because he has seen ahead. He has seen what is going to happen. He has gone ahead of you. And so it can't, you, see, you see, because when God works, God does not work like every human being, you know, from the beginning. No, he actually starts, finishes it, and then he comes back to take you in. That's the way it works. He's the beginning and the end. So, so he now calls out and says, no, let's go. So when God is telling you, let's go, it's because he has already walked through the journey. He has, he has already gone. If he brought you to 2023, it's because you're already well to the end of 2023 and he's holding your hands and saying, you know what, let's go now. So you don't walk into 2023 with fear. 
We don't know who to agree with uh, red votes for elections. They're not voting for elections. My Jehovah has been elected already. <laughs> yes, you know, what is coming up is important. Don't don't mistake that. It's important. But what I'm saying is that I don't predicate my life on what is going to happen as by elections. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't predicate my life. I'm not going to be more prosperous in life. Based on whatever comes in, no. Before the person came in, I've already been made prosperous. Uh, hallelujah. Things are not going to be tight for me because of whatever comes in. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. There is a word that has already preceded the person that is going to come in. Do you see? So the word is taking your hand and is now telling you, as a result of what's going to happen, you need to keep a joyful heart. You need to keep a joyful heart. Even though in you know all that may be in the store may have dried up even though you know the weather doesn't look like it even though there is this there is that there is the other do not be tempted do not be tempted into maintaining a sorrowful heart don't be tempted to it don't be tempted to it once you set into that feeling right immediately tell yourself, no, this is not a season to be downcast. Just like David did, talk to yourself, why are you quieting within your my soul? Why? <laughs> Share yourself up with the words of God. So this is a season to rejoice. It says pray without season. This is also a season to be deliberate about your prayer. I'm not doing much teaching here, right? In the course of the of the year, as the Lord, you know, wills, we'll teach some of these things, you know, a bit more, um, more, more elaborately. But this is just me highlighting some of these things that the Lord highlighted for me and has given me the latitude to share with you. I have certain things that you should pay attention to as a church. Pray without season. How do I do that? How do I pray without season? How do I pray without season? Do you see that with every single time I will not walk again? No, we've explained this, you know, in church. You need to keep your heart that is always connected to God. You know, prayer is fellowshipping with the Lord. So just keep your heart that is connected. Keep your heart that is connected. Always have something you're meditating on. Have a go-to, a go-to scripture. The same way you leave your house, you... You take your phone. There are certain things that must leave your house with you. Some of you, if you leave your phone in the house, you come back to pick up your phone. If you leave your research in the house, you come back to pick up your research. You know, there are certain things. That's the same. Your prayer should be an ornament that is on you, that you must take with you every single time, everywhere you go. Says everything, give thanks. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Mm -mm, don't do that. That was one of the things the Israel of all did. That made God say they tempted me. How they tempted me? They were always complaining. So it says always give thanks. Permit me to go to verse 21. I want to spend a little time in verse 21. It says, test all things. The King James says, prove all things. And hold fast what is good or what is true. Prove all things. That's where I'm going to, you know, just for the next couple of minutes, just zooming on. Prove all things. Hold fast. What does the Bible mean when it says you should prove all things? And then you should hold fast to that which is true. What does that mean? How do I prove it? How do I prove all things? The way to prove all things is this. You prove all things through the word of the Lord. I hope we have sufficient time to look at this. You prove all things to the, with the word of the Lord. God's word has come up to you. And there are even private things that the Lord will, have, will tell you in this particular year. This is the year to make sure that you prove that we do not have told you. Now, prove not with the sense to invalidate, but prove to tell you, to convince yourself, to convince every other person that this word is true. You, to prove means to put it to the test. Take it to the laboratory. See for yourself that it is true. Let every other thing that hangs around it become shadow in the light of the word of the Lord. Let God's word be true and every man a lie. Don't be quick to quit on the word that the Lord has given you when you don't see the manifestation quickly. Stay with it till it pulls through. 
stay with the call to the push through. Stay with the word. Don't look to the left or look to the right. Don't deviate from it. If this word was spoken into your heart, yes, stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with the word. Take the word and take it to the laboratory of life. And prove that this word that has been given to me, prove it. To, to prove it means take, just take it to the word. The, that was what Abraham did with the word that was given unto him. He proved it. He took it out. He acted on it. He mixed it out. He mixed it. Did everything. He made sure he stayed with it until he produced. That's what he's called the father of faith. When Paul and Barnabas were sent forth, were sent forth, in Acts chapter 13, they didn't just come back and say, no, we don't even understand this mission, this call. Let's, let's be first. God. No, they took that call and took it out till they found it to be true, till the Gentiles submitted to the word of the Lord, to the uttermost part of the earth, prove all things and hold fast to that which is true. Prove all things. So this is the year to prove that God's word works. This is the year to put God's word to the test. Don't just be someone where we hear the word of God and sit on it. No. Go out and act on the word. Go out and act on the word. If it feels like, okay, something is wrong, they come back again to the class. Okay, so what, what have I missed here? You see, some of the faith walks, there are some people here that you have faith walks that you've left. You started out on it. But because it took a little longer than you thought it would take, you left it alone and just hung it and just left. You didn't believe for it again. You didn't drive at it again. You didn't, there was no extra anything to it. Go back to those things. Those manifestations are still waiting for you to act on them. Go back to them. Go back to them. Some things that you believe God for in 2020. And because, right, you know, after six months, you just feel like, Maybe, maybe not. No, it is. Go back to those things again and step out. Step out on it. Step out on it. What, what God gave you that this is what I wanted to do. But because it didn't look like it. You know, the environment didn't look like you should do this. Don't wait on the environment. God already sent you his word. Go back to those things and act on them again. Go back to those things and act on them again. Go back, pick them up. Those faith walks. Pick them up, those wells that, you, that have been clogged because, you know, you just dug them halfway and just left. Go back there again. There are some many treasures that you will find in just redigging some of those wells. In revisiting those faith walks, there are certain treasures that you will find again. So go back. Go back. Test all things. Prove all things. And hold fast to that which is true true hallelujah you know well this is as much as i'll go for today ephesians sorry second thessalonians 5 from 16 to 22 rejoice always pray without season in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you right goes ahead and say that you not know, quench the spirit spirit of the lord despise not prophesying prove all things so fast without which you strong abstain from all evil form of evil Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. So pay attention to these things. That is how you will see God work. You know, that is how you will see the word work. Don't try to, you know, put the instruction of the Lord aside, set it aside, and try to do other things. You know, the Bible says, this was Samuel speaking to Saul. After the Lord had given him certain instructions, and he didn't obey them. And then he went on sacrificing. And then Paul, I'm sorry, um, Samuel came and said, look, look, Obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than just a, don't try to do other things and buy God for what if you have not done what they are telling you to do, go back there and pick it up again. Just think about it. Don't try to bribe God by coming early to church. Now we should come early to church or try to bribe God by fasting. Fasting will not change his instructions. Don't be like a balam. Don't bring back the, the doctrine of balam again. The one that already told him, look, don't go. But then they came again with plenty of gear and said, no, let me check again. Why are you checking again? The Lord already gave you an instruction. 
They're already given. Don't try to bribe God with other things when you've not obeyed what is. Go back to those last commands. Now, this is very specific. You know, this is not just a general thing. As many people as this resonates with, go back again. Go back again. Pick up those things. And you will see again that God's word actually contains that anointing. Go back and do those things. And the well will pop up, will gush out with water for you and for your loved ones and family. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, that's as much as I have for you today. Glory to God. Till I see you next week. Keep feeding your faith and starving your doubts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That was so much, so much in one. This is really download, you know. If you had to use data, you will use a lot because there's so much to download. It's heavy. So, you know, you have to, you know, when you want to download some things, you need Wi-Fi. You can't use your mobile or else everything will just finish. This is, this is heavy. Uh, God bless you, Pastor Timmy. Um, Revelations 2.7 says that he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to his, to the church now you don't have one ear you have two ears so he who has two ears let him hear and hear again what the spirit says to his church so out of zion you have instruction direct instructions from first thessalonians 5 to 16 god bless you pastor timmy now write this bible verse but i've never really seen it in this slide that really i was looking at it that really these are instructions though. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. You know, there are instructions. And you know one thing about instruction. When you are instructing a child, for example, your child, your children, sometimes you don't tell them the consequences of those instructions. You just, that's like talking too much because sometimes they will not even come. You have to see the child and say, you know, if you go near the gas, it can explode. Everywhere can get burnt. The house can get burnt. You can get burnt and be hospitalized, you know for days and all of that. You don't need to go into details. Just give instruction. Don't go there. Do this, do that. So that is what God does for us sometimes. Just gives us rejoice always. He doesn't have to tell you the benefit of rejoice. Even you, you, what you expect is that when you do those things, you will see the benefits in your life as you, as you just carry out the instructions. You know, I want us all to, wherever we are, just pray for Pastor Timmy or Kwelami that he will continue to stand, you know, having done all that God will continue to strengthen his, strengthen his um, spirit man with all might, that the Lord will continue to reveal himself to him, you know, through his word, as he studies the word of God, God himself will continue to, you know, reveal dimensions to him, and, you know, he will get to know God the more, and the word will also work in his life and his family it would it would it would profit by the word of god in jesus name and the lord will continue to use him as vessel unto honor in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father thank you for your son thank you for the gift of your son pastor timmy to out of zion to the baptizing church to the world lord we thank you we thank you that we you know we have come in contact with him thank you for Continue continually using him, and we know that it is from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. This year, he will experience greater dimension of glory that he has never experienced in ministry in his life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, because you have heard us in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the instructions that has been you know straight out of His Word to us in 2023. Now you have instructions. Just go and follow. He will hear us two ears. Let him hear and hear what the Spirit of God has said to his church. So now, um, we quickly, we'll be taking the offering. You know, we are not giving so that we'll be blessed. No, we are blessed already. And just out of, you know, knowing that we are blessed, we are just giving back what God has given to us. You know, we are just, we are just giving cheerfully. So be a cheerful giver. The account um, details have been, has been displayed on the screen. For those on um, audio, I will just read it out by now we should have um our the church saved as beneficiary if you don't you can just do that when you are doing this transaction so the baptizing church um assets bank account number 0772 i'll take it again um the assets bank the baptizing church 0772 
So do well to give to God's word and um, God, God you, are, you are blessed. So we'll be taking a confession is also displayed on the screen. Um, thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give and participate in the work of the kingdom. All we have is yours. And out of what you have given us, we honor you with our seed. We make bold to say that you make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to us in abundance so that under all circumstances and whatever the need, we will be sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid nor support, but will be fully furnished in abundance unto every good work and charitable donation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. I believe that you have been blessed, you know, because it's God's word. If you are not blessed, then that means you did not, like Pastor Sim said, you did not, your heart was not in the right posture because God's word always blesses any time, any day, you know. So I believe we have all been blessed and we have received instructions. So all I will just say to you is that go and follow the instructions to the letter and you will come back, you know, with testimonies just because you obeyed the instructions that have been given. Thank you everyone for joining in. We just want to type in something to register your presence or what, um, what has really blessed you. You may want to type in something in the chat room. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you, Pastor. And um, Daniel, mm, I don't know the meaning of mm. You know when the word the word the word has hit you so much that you don't even have words just do mm -hmm. amen thank you everyone um tomorrow will be workers meet um, on saturday will be workers meeting um let's do good to for all workers that may, are expected to be in that meeting at um, it's going to be a physical meeting at a former at a venue in maryland was in formal venue, <laughs> Maryland was me from 9 a.m. So please make yourself available for that all important meeting, the very first for this year, 2023. And then our services continue on Sunday, 8.40 a.m. Pre-service prayer starts 8.40. But of course, you're expected to be in church before then. You know, we are starting the prayer, not that you should be getting into the church at that time. So let's all let's all come with joy. You know, joy is, is our core value, is one of our core values in the baptizing church. So let's prepare our hearts, be joyful. You can be joyful, you can you can decide to be joyful. You know, joy is not what is it's not happiness, it's different from happiness, it's not about what is happening, but joy is from within. So you can well up joy from within you, even in the midst of of mess of you know whatever it is that is happening you can well up joy thank you everyone for joining in so see you again next time same time same venue um and be between now and next week please make sure you are following instruction day by day first thessalonians 5 16. thank you pastor timmy thank you everyone have a lovely night rest Say you are done, I just need to align you Because you are not the man